Liberty Flight sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley. And there we go. It is a Monday night. It is 9 o'clock. It is time to 10-Year Tip with myself, Gary Dibley, and the ever-capable Modmaster. That is um, Mark. Um, I'm on holiday this week, um, which has been great. Um... I'm on holiday, but I've spent most of the day in the shed, and probably will do for the foreseeable future. Um, lots of things I'm trying to finish, um, and today I, I, I've wired 30 VV boards um, for some reason, um, but it took for ages. And my glue gun, my hot glue gun, um, decided to uh, explode all over me. Um, luckily, it wasn't in my lap at the time. I would show you my finger um, that has got a rather nice blister on the end of it, but I may offend a few people because it is the middle one. Um, I don't really want to be sticking that up to camera. Not today, anyway. Um, yes, so news. What's happened this week? Well, this week, um, yeah. uh, I'm now a moderator, believe it or not, on, on as well as the Vapor Trails Forum, on UK Vapors Forum. I'm um, very pleased to be joining the team over there. And my first mission is to ban all the modders. Um, obviously joking. Um, I won't be doing that, but it'll be great. Uh, no, not going to. Um, so yeah, lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff, hopefully, going on in the shed this week. And we're going to be filming um, most of it uh, for, for the sort of bits coming up and this and the other. Haven't had a chance to play with the DNA mod yet. Um, obviously got that. Um, I have spent far too much time playing with the uh, with the Mac um, and and do, doing things I really shouldn't be doing. Um, and poor cat has probably been pulling her hair out and would like to kill me um, with the amount of questions I've been bombarding her with in terms of uh, silly things. You know, it's so different. How how do you minimise some you know silly things? But I do apologise, cat. Sorry. Um, so. Lots of stuff still going on. Obviously, Mr. Dorm is away on his owls. Uh, he's probably laying somewhere with legs akimbo on a beach in Lanzarote. Um, and uh, I don't know if you see the, uh, the sort of the, the team fill in um, on Sunday. Um, that is a uh, going to become a, a feature now um, on, on a Wednesday night while Dave is away. Um, it looked very good fun. I've been in a few of those and um, I quite... I won't point blankly refuse to, but uh, you know sometimes they recorded things that should not have been recorded of me, um, probably under the influence of beer um, and sat half naked in the shed. Um, with all that said, I'm going to crack on with our first little bits. Um, I'm continuing obviously with the pipe mod, and it is it is now becoming a a thing of love. Um, I'm beginning to love my wood, um, and. Uh, you know what more can a man want than waking up every morning walking in his shed and and just holding his wood in his hand um and giving it a gentle buff um to make sure it's nice and smooth um so i'll be carrying on with that and uh, and obviously mark um this week is is going to be finishing off um his uh, his little uh, vv box that he's doing and i've seen the videos absolutely cracking what I've actually done is, uh, you know, because a lot of people who watch this um, on, on the replay, I've started to try and do, if you like, a little prequel to sort of, uh, it's easy for me to say, to try and get you up to speed um, as to, to, to where we were and where we left off. Now, I know Mark is probably going to kill me for this, um, but uh, here's Mark's.
tidy up that way when I've finished. And this one, which I'm going to pop through the top connector on the switch to make life easier later on. At least that's the plan. leave a whole lot of spare wire there. Well, that's that done. From then... need a wire up the other side of course. When I'm done, I'll tidy up all these wires. And then we'll be back in a second. So I've got the wires through for the positive and negative input coming from the two switches. We just sold it down on top of both of them. Like so. And now we have positive uh, power coming to the board uh, through the two switches. We've got the potentiometer weighed up. It's just a matter of finishing off the last four wires, which is the two wires from the display and the positive and negative from the atomizer connector. So I'm going to twist the two together. Uh, same on that side. I'm just going to make a problem them through the holes. These have quite large holes for the wires. It's an easy job to get both of them through, which is why I'm wiring them up this way. Rather than running the wire from the display onto the atomizer connector. This will keep the wires together. And basically, that's the mod done. There is a fair amount of extra wire lying around here, but it won't really make a massive amount of difference to things. This is nothing that can short out on anything else. Now I will need to epoxy this down in place when I'm done, but that can wait for another day. All you need to do is add your lid. Sit there. Oh, this lid will just screw down in place when you're done. And you can forget about it. So, first battery. Pop 
off in like that. And the second one will go in there, you can just put that in there at the way for when you want to change your batteries. Pop that on. And that'll be it switched off, so when I press the button, nothing happens. Alrighty. tested things out. Right, well we're back for a, another week and um, and to save all of the uh, all of the drilling and bits and pieces today I've actually been outside um, already um, and our pipe is sort of coming or it's, it's getting a little bit smaller. What you may also notice is I've started work on the um, on the stem. Um, kept the angle of that wood going up and, and started to, to sort of round in a, a stem sort of shape. The ultimate aim at, at the end of this is to try and lathe um, something out of this tortoise shell. It's actually going to uh, stick on, on the end of here like, a, like an end cap carrying my, um, my 510 connection. So I'm probably going to have to drill down there, sort of lay the portion in, bigger portion, match it up. It's going to be an absolute bugger to get it to, um, I think, to get this perfectly round by hand. Um, but hopefully the belt sander is going to come in handy. So, I mean, that's where we're up to. Realistically, what I want to try and do is take this down um, to... Because I'm going to take this, I think, with, with the RSST. Um, so I'm looking at, at taking it pretty much... Uh, to the circumference of is a big word for me. Um, so looking to take that down to to pretty much fit the uh, RSST. As you can see, when that starts coming together, it's not going to look too big. I've taken the size down somewhat, as you can see, and now starting to round it off a lot more on the um, on the the little sort of router bit. So that's the aim. That's where I'm looking to get to. Um, the switch is still fitting in there nicely now um, and it all lines up and all of that sort of stuff I'm going to start taking a little bit off the switch so I can even up these sides now and try and get it a little bit more round but it's still the size I wanted it in the hand it may it may look like it's getting a bit smaller I don't know the lights going up and down I'm um, I'm obviously on the floor in the shed today so that's where we're at my next sort of stage is really to try and work this neck, work a bit more shape into the pipe. Um, I may well film some uh, some of the uh, action of that, and then realistically, um, I need to be getting to, um, to sort of where we are with the top cap and stuff as well. Um, so that's a bit of an up-to-date thing. Um, I don't know how it's going to go. And like I say I could make one slip with this thing, and, and this could just fly off but um, hopefully with keeping it with the sort of shape of the uh, of the branch it, it, it should be should be nice and sturdy get in there get in there ever so ever so slowly um, I've got a problem although I said I was going to be lathing um, the <laughs> of uh, the gear selectors gone on the lathe um, and uh, and where it's rocking around it's actually blown by the bearings um, I've ordered some new gears and it looks like I've now got all the bearings because it, they thought it was a gear that stripped. Um, I might film that, but that's going to be another show. I'll come back to you in two. I don't know how much of this we're going to sort of show you, but giving you a rough idea of, of where we are up to, to date. There we go. Pop back in two.
that's only how I imagine it. Oh, because nothing's connected. But I was just doing a <laughs> second E C stunt sig. Um, there was no real vapour produced from this chunk of wood yet. But just to give you a rough idea, um, this is where I'm sort of getting to. Um, we've even made a, a drip tip, which we hope we, which will sort of match the wood when it's all stained up. Um, so it's sort of getting there, sort of, sort of getting there. It's taking on a much better um, shape now. And it is most definitely, is, I know it's a chunky pipe, it is a chunky pipe, but I think for the RSST it looks okay. Ish. I've sort of got the angle there. This is only wedged in at this moment in time, um, which didn't quite well. But uh, all I've done is, is literally just uh, dropped a centre hole down in there um, to enable the shape in and stuff as well. What I've done on the um, on the Dremel is actually let me just drop down a tad so you can see. What I've actually done is started to blend in the uh, let's see that. blend in the stem um, I say I'm making this up as I go along really and I've used the really fine um, blade there the little fine routing bit and literally just been working that in not with my hand but working that in now I think I'm roughly out of shape I'm happy with I think I am. I think I'm roughly at a shape. It's sort of central. It's always going to be wonky as hell. Um, trying to even it up a bit as I go. But I'm, I'm nearly there. I'm nearly to the point where I'm going to start sanding this. Um, I need to obviously level off the end. So I've got a nice flat level end there to embed my chunk of whatever it is I'm going to put on the uh, on the end of there now I might take it down a tad I don't know um, I'm really wanting to use this torch shell stuff which does give me I mean that's quite fat stuff so that will give me a, a nice sort of tortoise shell stump so it's probably going to come out past there and what I'll do is I'll like I say if you imagine this how it is now yeah what I'll do is I'll drill a central hole through um, a chunk of this um, I'll probably have a uh, an insert which will go pretty much the length of there for added strength and then that will insert in um, and the theory is it will match up centrally and seamlessly with the wood in practice it probably won't um, so there's going to be a lot of working the reason I haven't been filming what we've been doing is basically because it's it's a lot more of the um, yeah, a lot more of the uh, dremely stuff, um, and uh, <laughs> it's, it's damn well noisy. Uh, belt sanders coming out next, um, where we'll probably start injecting a little bit more uh, shape, rounding off some of the edges, um, and getting it to a point where we can start um, sanding, actually sanding down, um, drilling through uh, into our cavity. Um, I'm going to probably, hopefully, looking at the angle where that is going. I'm probably, if I drill on that angle, going to come out probably directly in the base of there. Um, if you look at me angle of me, me pencil, roughly where I want to be drilling, I'm going to come out roughly to the bottom of that switch level. I think somewhere around about there. So it will, uh, it should hit the bottom of the cavity, which is where I want to go, because theoretically what I've got is two wires going to my switch, um, a pos pin down in the bottom there using the, the casing to carry the, the negative um, and happy days. So we're moving, we're moving rapidly now and, and it is time to uh, to get the, the belt sander out um, and uh, start hacking it up some more. Um, and then really working in with the fine sandpaper, working out a lot of these um, a lot of these blemishes and this that and the other. So lots and lots of sanding to come now. I'll show you some of it, I won't show you all of it because it will be as boring as hell. But very happy with that shape now to my hand. It, it fits well and I could have switched it on the top, or, but I, I like this side switch. Still rocking. Back to me in the studio. 
Liberty Flight sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley. back in the room once again and um, I purposely made that echo just to test that you're all still there watching and and testing the capabilities of the of the team in the background who think I'm totally oblivious to Skype even though I've turned my beep off I'm not um, we're going to continue now with our next little section um, where Mark uh, he's, he's looking into his little problem um, he can't get it to fire um, what can that be I'll see you back very shortly after this Right then, as you'll have seen at the end of the last video, which was a week ago by the way, um, things weren't going quite right and after the video I had to go through and I've checked everything on this, I uh, visually inspected everything to make sure there wasn't anything obvious and I tested out the switches, made sure they were working properly, all the connections went through. I spent well over an hour checking everything. I uh, took the batteries out, put them on the charger. They were reading green, so it was telling me they were fully charged. So I came back, I popped the batteries back in, still nothing. So I tested the connections to the battery unit, they were all fine. I checked out the batteries were connecting properly, and yes, they were. And then I checked the voltage that was coming off the pair of batteries which point it told me it was half a volt and it wasn't those batteries it was these ones and the problem has been this battery despite it telling me it's fully charged on the charger uh, this battery is dead completely I don't know what's gone wrong with it or what but I get nothing out of that and it rattles now when I shake it so the simplest things can cause the biggest problems then I should have checked that first, but when I saw it on the charger it said it was fine, so I assumed it was fine. Live and learn. And of course, I also managed to break one of the major rules of always have spare batteries handy. And this size I didn't, so I've had to wait a while and get some new batteries. But now I've got a fresh pair in. Uh, everything appears to be on the case, so... As you'll see there, we're getting a reading now. I'll turn that and this display won't show anything below 2.9. I go slightly below that and the display will go off. 
course there that's the power off completely. Turn it up. And she there you go. You get a display. So now that part's working, okay. Now I need to check for an output before I decide to go any further. So I'm gonna pop a tank down. I'm gonna use this Vivinova for testing uh, probably from now on for two reasons. One, it's got a nice sprung center pin, so I know whatever I screw it down onto, it's not gonna crush the connection. And two, this is a three and a half ohm coil. So when I'm testing out things that go up to seven volts, I'm not gonna be popping the coil. And at 4.6 you hear it starting to sizzle. If I take it up the maximum, it will go as far as 5.4, 5.5 volts. So, at that, it's producing very well. Yes, yeah, very well indeed, actually. So, next job, I'll just pop the lid on. So that's the unit completed. Now I've got a control knob for this. So I'm going to take that to off. This is actually designed for a guitar, I believe. But it's got the numbers on. Now I'll just pop over the top. And if I pop that there, that's going to be the off position. Now I can turn it around to where I want. So let's say 5. And it's actually reading 5.2 on there, I believe. Right? There you go. So I'm going to have a rough idea of where I am on the voltage by turning this. All the way up to full volume, which is 5.4. So it overhangs slightly, but only just so. It does mean I can actually just run my finger up the side if I wanted to. So the next job, I could just screw this together and that'll be it done. With this sticking loosely it won't really matter. But I thought I have got a heat sink here, which I can add to this. And this will help things, especially if I'm going to be running it at high voltages. So I've stretched this out slightly, so it's just a matter of trying to get it over the chip. And there we go, it just snaps into place. And that will sit there. I believe I've got enough room in here to, for that to work. And yes, there's more than enough room in there. So. One thing which will be a problem is this, the connections for the display are right here. There is a small danger of this shorting out, so I will want to put some, probably put some of the epoxy across that, just to block it all off. And that's probably going to be my next job, is to seal this in place, just so it doesn't all move around. So, out with the epoxy, I think. As usual, just a quick even mix. That's all it takes. And when I drop this epoxy in. Down there. I'll drop it over that connector so that makes sure that that will be insulated.
the belt sender and um, as you can see I've started to really get some nice shape well I think nice shape running through there um, definitely got this stem starting to blend in and feel part of part of it now and really can see um, just what the grain is going to be like on that bowl so really happy with with sort of how this is turning out um, the hardest bit now is is the lengthy bit the long bit um, if you can see when I put me uh, me tube on here obviously I've still got some work to do now I'm using that tube to line up because that is a 22 mil tube and um, I think it is and obviously the only way I'm going to work this now is by hand um, I've got all my roughing done all of me rough smoothing out done everything done that I sort of need to do the only thing that I'm going to probably have to adapt ever so slightly is going to be the switch housing um, now because of the way that, that I've taken this back now um, you can see he says that the switch doesn't fit absolutely flush in there now it still fits perfectly down inside there it doesn't fit flush because I've taken I put a little ridge inside because this switch does have a tiny little ridge if you can see that 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 will need to be just sort of taken out to uh, to take that home you can sort of see and obviously there's some squaring up here but all of that now is is literally going to be worked by hand um, you can probably see as I say I was bitten now I wasn't bitten by any of the tools um, I was actually bitten by the thing I was trying to use to make the, the tools stable and safe um, from here um, this is a, a bog standard um, B&Q uh, it's the aluminium oxide um, I'm going to start with a P180 to start working this um, as you can see the sun is coming out now the P180 is um, or is it the P80? No! did that last time it's the P80 that I'm going to start using first which is this one which is a, a much coarser grit and literally um, let me just see if I can I'm trying to get some natural light but it's, it's just not working really is it he says oh, we, we can still see that that's good so literally I'm going to start taking a chunk of this P80 and I just rough it up and I'm literally now going to start working that by hand now this is a seriously lengthy process. Um, I've probably got about a week's worth of sanding this and I'm, the way I'm going to take down this end piece is literally by wrapping round and working this by hand. Literally, if I can get a good trying to look in the camera, but I'm literally going to start working all of that by hand and rotating it. That's the only way I'm going to get the sort of fit that I want to get. Let me see if I can get some uh, of a better picture. I'll pop back into. There we go. <laughs> we are back in the room once again. I love some of the descriptions of the shape of the little pipey thing. Um, we've had potato, apple, golf ball, whatever. I'm in love with it. You leave it alone. Um, it's, it's becoming a, um, a mission now. Um, obviously taking it from a branch to uh, to something that may well vape at some point in the very near future. Um, I'm not sure if it will or not. But uh, no, don't diss the pipe-ish thing. You can if you want. I don't care. Um, let me... Uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Um, obviously Dave's away. Um, but before he went, um, Dave has actually put together a, a little video for me. Um, that we will be using and uh, hopefully this may see me through uh, just after vape fest because I may be ever so slightly still hungover when I arrive back here on Monday um, well 
you would hope not, wouldn't you? But uh, may well be. Um, obviously, Vape Fest is coming up in God knows how many days. Not many now. It's the 17th of August. I'll show you a little promo on that a little bit later on. Um, but I do have this coming up for Dave on Tinu Tip very shortly. So there we go. I am going to slip into our second little ad break if I can find the damn thing and uh, I'll pop back after this. Liberty Flight sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley. this bit till the very end because I want to make sure, absolutely certain that everything's working okay before I go fixing anything like this in place because otherwise once it's in you're stuck with it basically. While I've got a little bit of epoxy left over there's one job I need to do for a future show and you might recognize one of these black boxes it's another DNA 20 and as you'll know from my past experience, I had a problem with the connection on the display. So what I'm going to do, it's this connection that I had the problem with. So I'm just going to take a little bit of the spare epoxy. And just drop it down on top of there. To make sure that nothing moves later on. And one last little bit. It's just going to go oh, me, down into there. It's basically going to seal that up. So if I just leave that standing, hopefully when all that sets, I'm a lot less late, a lot less likely to damage this. Now these have all been given time to set now, and the proxy is nice and hard. So this should be a lot better to use now. I shouldn't have a chance of breaking it. Fingers crossed. But it's going to go back in its box till another show. That you will be seeing shortly. So, back to the modern question. Uh, all these connectors now are fully covered with epoxy, so there's no danger of anything shorting out anything. 
it's all fixed in place. So I'll just fold that back on itself. That's gonna be this thing completed, but I want to make one tiny adjustment. And that's to this battery cover at this end. I need to knock out a little bit of this lip just to make it easier to get the batteries in and out. So I'm just gonna grab a small file. I've got a nice set of little micro files now. And just a bit cleaner, just and this down across here. Take away a little bit of what was getting in the way. As you see it'll still fit in nicely. So now we just pop the battery in through the hole. Basically, that's going to be your mod good to go. All I need to do now is screw four little screws in place. That makes sure that everything's going to be out of the way. Remember, don't screw them in too tight because you will break the things that are screwing in there, they tend to snap away. So, there you have it, the complete mod. Just pop that on there. I need a lovely sizzle off it. One thing I was thinking about was this back plate, there's a slight indent uh, where the switches are, eh, where the screws are. I did think I could add a mirror over the top of this just to make it completely over the top and shiny. So I've cut out a bit of this thin mirroring for a spec, so I'm just going to glue it in place. Be so easy to get this off again if I ever have to go inside, but it will come off. If I just pop that down like this, move the backing. Completely over the top, completely useless, but a bit of fun. Just one more quick thing before I forget. Uh, I better show you that you can actually get these batteries back out. So, just put on that. Get your first one out. And the second one. Not so easy, but you can just leave it out. There you go. Never as easy on camera, is it? Right, 
definitely back next week. Well, it says something of a better picture, but the, the light is really bugging me today. So I am, as I was saying, literally going to be working this now by hand and, and sort of trying to work out every contour um, that I've got in there. Every bit that, that, that doesn't feel right is going to be sanded out. Now this may seem a long, long way of, of doing this. It may seem completely pointless doing it this way. The only reason I'm doing it this way is because I know, and there goes the light again, I know that this is going to give me the sort of finish I want. I can feel I can definitely feel what I want to sort of iron out, the bits that I want to keep. There's going to be bobbly bits all over the place. It's not going to be it's not going to be a a perfect shape. It was never going to be a perfect shape. I'm not a pipe maker. I am far from a pipe maker. You can probably see as well, we started off with a massive great thing, how tiny now that has become. Um, and that is because I wanted to rough it out with, with the, you know, rough it out first, you've got to take, and it's probably going to get even smaller. The more that I sand and try and take out the little imperfections and the bumps and all of that sort of stuff, the smaller it's going to become. Now, the last time I did Stumpy, this sanding part pretty much took a week. And not a week non-stop, because that would be silly. But a week of, of just in the evenings, sitting down with a chunk of newspaper, watching telly, and cracking on with some sanding. Already after that little tiny sort of session, I can see that you know this potentially is going to be shaping up to be something that I might be actually proud of. He says, "That'd be nice." I find this this aluminium oxide stuff is really good good paper and it does give a very very good finish and you don't really have to take it down you know massively all I'm looking to do here with this with the rough stuff is literally take out all me you know as I say lumps and bumps and this and any other that, that are left behind by the sander and just literally by feel and by eye because ultimately, if it feels good in the hand, you know, there may be some blemishes on there, there may be some of this, there may be some of that, but if it feels nice, and it feels nice to use, that's the main bit sort of conquered. And hopefully with this, I'll be able to start working in that stem a bit more. So, you know, it actually feels part of it. Um, I was in two minds whether to do the stem, um, Purely, I know a lot of people would make the, the lamp and driller an ego connection in or something like that, but I think this just adds to adds to it a little bit. I don't know, me personally, but I think it does. I think it's going to add a nice little, especially if we can get it right, get it round, get it shaped, get it all that sort of stuff. So yeah, I've got lots of this to do. Lots and lots of this to do. Obviously I want to take out all these scorch marks and all that sort of stuff. So I'm just trying to give it a rough job and now zoom down to show you roughly where we're up to. And already those imperfections 
are starting to sort of come out. <laughs> Mind you, when I zoom up, they're not. <laughs> but that's what I mean. It shows you that, that this now is, is quite rigid. And, and all the bumps and lumps and all that sort of stuff, that's what I've got to be working at. Even the wood out. And again, all the time I'm doing this, all I'm doing is adding more shape. But after today's efforts, that's sort of where we're at. You can see in there all the bits that are going to need working, that do need working, the stuff that we did on the belt sander and on the, with the Dremel. Realistically, it may be totally wrong, but the way that I sort of work it is with the Dremel first to shape it, on the belt sander to sort of smooth it out a bit, and then by hand to finish it off. I'd like to get this finished if I can before for vape fest. I'm going to go away, I'm going to carry on sanding, um, see how we go with that. But we are finally sort of looking like we're actually sort of getting somewhere, I think. Hopefully. Little baby. And when they're stained up, that's going to be nice. Right, I'll come back in two. And there we go, we're back in the room once again. Um, yes, there was me frantically rubbing my wood on the floor of the shed. Um, I'm going to be doing that quite a lot over this week um, to maintain, well, I'm trying to get it, uh, you know, smooth. Um, and you, you have to work it quite hard with that sandpaper to, to sort of... Um, Get it to a nice level. I, I I took it right down through the grits with with the uh, with with stump E, and it seemed to come out very well in the end. I think um, I've got a little bit of a announcement. I think possibly maybe may well have if I can find the video. I'm going to play this, and then I'm going to come back before we end. I have a little bit of news um, exclusive to uh, to our viewers. <laughs> So there we go. At the end of there, it did say a children in need drip tip announcement coming soon. Well, I had some very, very, very good news today and I can confirm, um, hopefully, that uh, by this time next week, um, I may have something in my hand. Um, this this taking quite a lot of sort of planning, preparation, communication and a very, very helpful uh, team at other end um, dealing with stuff let me just I'm gonna show you I'm, te I'm gonna tease you I'm gonna tease you ever so slightly while I show you these you may well recognize those from the uh, from the videos they are a uh, selection of tips uh, from the ones that we made um, made up in stainless steel that hopefully I will have with me um, at vape fest um, selling those and uh, and a percentage of these will be going to children in need. The aim is to make well over a thousand pound on the day to top up the uh, the fund, which is already nearly at I think it's at about fifteen hundred quid, something like that. Um, worse, it's just below that. 
hopefully that's going to be a massive boost and obviously we've got the raffle coming up to us soon I'm hoping they can wing their way across the seas, land and air, and, and actually land here, and I may be able to uh, to sort of um, show you one of those uh, one of those live. But oh, I'm sporting an acrylic version of one of those tonight, which is damn good. With all that said, it has been emotional once again. Thank you very very much for the team. Um, apologies to Cat, who was actually um, she made some new titles, which included Mark. Um, I had them on the Mac. I totally lost them. Um, I'm still getting used to a, the file system and all, all that sort of stuff. Really don't know how it works. I'm sort of winging it. Um, but this time next week, um, oh, quickly, very, very quickly, schedule for this week. Um, tomorrow we have uh, Vapor Sync with Marco um, and then followed by DE Talk, I think. Um, and then on Wednesday, uh, the team chat from the uh, from the Hangout will be coming to you. On Thursday, um, I will be back um, with Lewis uh, and we'll be doing sort of like a haze hour-ish type thing. Um, and uh, I'm not 100% sure um, whether Dave Co will be back on Sunday. Apologies for the, the schedule thing, you know, over the next few weeks. People are on holiday. It's going to get messy, um, but you will have shows. I'm pretty sure of that. With all that said, I will see you next week. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers, guys. Tim, your tip with Gary Dibley.